But uh, the first discussion is called the, uh, the digital vision, or what exactly is it called? I should, I should make certain. Your digital identity. I can always remember the titles and whatnot. Uh, but it is basically asking everyone to respond in a sort of personal way to the main article that we had you read. The very first thing that you did when you, when you got in, uh, we asked you to uh, read this article that was written by Mark Prinsky called Digital Natives, Digital Immigrants. And I think most people find it a kind of compelling read. If they've never thought about these kinds of things before, it really starts to uh, make you think about your digital identity and how it's different from a regular, you know, brick and mortar live world uh, identity. And, uh, you know, he posits this notion that there are people who grow up in the middle of technology and therefore it's all around them and they feel more fluent in it. And there are people who come to it later in life and they feel like uh, an immigrant, like a stranger in a strange land. And that even if you become proficient, you never feel like you're a complete native. Um, I don't know if you know who Henry Kissinger is. He was a famous um, politician, uh, um, but he, um, he, he came to the United States from Germany and he came at the age of 17. And although he was a major figure in American life for like 80 years, he always had this huge thick accent and he'd lived you know, practically all his life in this country. But because he didn't start speaking English till he came to the United States at the age of 17 or 18, he never lost that accent. Even though he lived here 60 or 70 years, he's, he's probably dead by now. He always talked with a really thick, heavy accent. And that's one of the things that immigrants tend to carry around as, as baggage. And, um, you know, Mark Prinsky is taking this analogy and he, and he talks about how um, uh, in the digital world, we still kind of have this baggage. And we're in the process of moving through that. Um, there's a lot of ways that that manifests itself. The very first um, uh, computer interfaces were all mimicked on real world things. I mean, I still have a trash can here to delete and it looks like a trash can because in the real world, I put my wadded up pieces of paper in the trash can. So every time they wanted to make something happen on a computer and they wanted people to be able to feel comfortable about performing that action, they made it seem like something that would happen in the real world. And um, this has gone on so long that people have been doing actions that they no longer do in the real world uh, on the computer. And sometimes these icons get to be kind of silly or old fashioned. Uh, you know, the icon for a phone is usually some kind of 1930s rot roto dial phone uh, because that's what the artwork looks like. But nobody uses those things anymore. So we are starting to move into a new age where the interfaces and the icons and things no longer refer to real world stuff because people have aged out of that. And so all of these things factor into how comfortable you feel with technology. You know, if, if you're brand new, you really want those lifelines. You really want that icon that looks like a telephone so you can know that that's the right button to click. But once you're very fluid in it, you want something that's, looks cool or, or is more efficient or has a personal meaning to you and so forth. And that's what this notion of becoming um, comfortable or fluent in technology is about. And uh, Mark Prinsky's article, while it's actually kind of rel revelatory, and I hope a lot of you found it a bit profound, it was written in 2001, over a decade and a half ago. So we are way beyond... Um, when he wrote this. And that means that most of you have, uh, have grown up as digital natives, that you are, you know, from the time you were born, you were playing with a, you know, a Nintendo Game Boy or, or some kind of young uh, apparatus. You know, your younger brothers and sisters have had their hands on iPads since they were two years old. So they are going to be more digitally native than you are. And um, so in your post, See, this first activity is a discussion board, and we want you to write about who you are. And we want you to write about who you are in reaction to what you've read about from Mark Prinsky. So you really need to reference the article. And what we want you to write is about 
how comfortable you feel you are with technology right now, about who you are as a digital person, a digital entity, an online actor at this point. Now, I don't want you to confuse that with who you want to become. I know you started school and you have all these great ambitions and you're going to become the king of the world. Um, but this particular discussion is about who are you right now? And that has to do with what influences you've had. So talk about the technology that you've used, the things that you're interested in, the, what you're comfortable with. Technology is both hardware and software. So some of you guys who are audio people, maybe you started off with lots of uh, cool boxes that made audio sounds and now everything is a piece of software or a plugin. And uh, you video game guys, I bet you had lots of different video game box systems because they didn't all go together, but maybe now everything is on Steam or everything is on Xbox. So, you know, there's a, there's a, a movement away from separate hardware into software and you guys are probably moving through those transitions. So I want you to talk about that. I want you to talk about what your influences are. Maybe you aren't influenced by video games or you aren't influenced by um, um, uh, software. Talk about what does influence you and what has made you the person that you are right now. And, and you can talk about things that you, you're not interested in. You say, maybe I'm not interested in social media or I, I don't do photography or, or things like that. Because um, when we say digital actor, it doesn't mean that you do everything. Nobody does everything. So you're going to be sort of defining a picture of who you are by what you're interested in or what you haven't dealt with. Maybe you could talk about some things that you're interested in learning more about, but you've never dealt with or experienced before. And this is a <laughs> school. So maybe some of those parts of, of um, your, your uh personality that you want to develop have to do with the intellectual component, uh, your search skills, or how, how comfortable you are with certain kinds of productivity software. So you, we want to just find a picture of, define a picture of who you are. And you're going to do this in a written post. So obviously I'm looking for more than one or two sentences here. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for a substantial paragraph. Two paragraphs would be good. And, uh, I, it needs to be a sort of conversation in which you are sort of answering back to Mark Prinsky who you think you are. And as part of that, we want you to come up with a name for yourself or coin a term. So I don't want you to say I'm a digital native. If you were born in 1991 and you've had technology all your life, you know, that's maybe a true statement. But what are you now? You're, you're a decade and a half beyond Mark Prinsky defining somebody as a digital native. So we want you to come up with your own term. And a lot of people are going to put the word digital in front of it. That's fine, but you don't have to. You, it's just a term that you're going to make up for yourself. The digital actor that you are online, if they had a business card, what would you put below your name on that business card? What is the term you would give yourself? So uh, we want you to put that in your post. And the post is the most important thing. Now, while the, while the discussion says digital vision, and this is what a lot of people end up focusing on. Uh, that's really the second part. That's like the dessert. The meat of this is the description that you're going to write about yourself. And that's what I want you to do first. Because the digital vision is something that is going to illustrate what you've written. And until you figure out what you've written, there's no point in trying to come up with an image. But if you think of your post as an article in a magazine then the digital vision is the illustration for that article. It is the piece of artwork that uh, helps set the mood or the tone for it. And what we're looking for is not high polished uh, stuff that can show off your skills. We're looking for visual metaphors. We're looking for ideas that express what, you've said, what you have to say in your writing. So, uh, Basically, we really want you to come up with some way of expressing who you are. So we're looking for a, an image of you that's maybe more than a selfie. And it doesn't even have to be photographic. There are lots of ways to describe yourself. A lot of people use word clouds as um, a metaphor for who they are. So I want to show you bits and pieces of different kinds of software that you can use. You have a complete range of choices of what you can do uh, to create your vision. Uh, and we will show you some, some uh, web software. 
most of the stuff that you're going to be dealing with all month or for the next three or four months, um, we don't really want to make you rely on the software on your, your computer that you have now because everyone's using a different computer. We haven't given you a school laptop yet. So um, it's not fair of us to require that you have Photoshop or require that you have Microsoft Office. So we're going to give you lots of options for things that you can use for free on the Internet. And I'm going to show you a bunch of different ones. But if you do have desktop software that you're comfortable with and you know exactly what image you want to make, feel free to use that and do that. And when we say vision, um, I'm, I'm primarily ending up talking about a, a, a picture, but we expand that to mean video and audio as well. So if you're a music person, you can create a piece of music. But remember, what you're trying to do is express who you are. So, and you're supposed to be talking about um, a reaction to Prinsky. So, uh, a piece of music without any lyrics or anything might be a little bit abstract. I'm sure some of you could pull it off, but um, mostly we're looking for what you have to say. And also, uh, you can make a video. And if you're not, if you want to make a video and you're not all that familiar with it, I'll show you some tools for that as well. So. Uh, these are the two parts. You're going to write your reaction, and when you post that text, you will also post an image or a song or a video to go with it. And uh, here's the main instructions that you download. Uh, I want to show you a little bit about um, these instructions. They're slightly vague because we don't want to give you a cookie cutter recipe for what we're supposed to be doing. These assignments are meant to have a little bit of room in there for you to figure them out. Because what we're testing is not just uh, what you turn in, but how you figure out how to do it. And so, uh, but that doesn't mean that if you don't understand something, you shouldn't ask. We absolutely want you to ask questions. You can message us all you want. And uh, for most instructions, we often include something called an FAQ or most frequently asked questions that will help, uh, you know, and it's basically things that we've heard people ask us before. So the FAQ for this lists a couple of websites. I'll show you some of them and, and, and uh, some of the others and um, uh, about what we mean. And I'll show you how to post into the, the website. Uh, it's not that difficult, but until someone shows you, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and then there's always something called a rubric with the assignment. And I don't really recommend reading this completely. But uh, basically, the deal is, we have several sections of digital literacy, and they're taught by several teachers um, because there's so many students coming into Full Sail at the same time. And uh, it would not be fair for uh, one person to get a better grade than someone in another section because that teacher was a more lenient grader. So what we've done as teachers among ourselves is we've agreed that these are the way that we're going to grade all the assignments. So this is kind of a contract among the teachers. And if, so it's, it's presented for you so that you know exactly how and why we give out particular grades. So if you get a grade and you don't understand it, you may want to come back to this and look through this to find out. But, uh, but the, um, in advance of doing the assignment, the, the one thing that, about the uh, rubric that's very helpful is to look at these points. You can see what we think is important. Uh, out of 100 points, this is how much points each one of these dimensions uh, are worth. And so the vision thing that most of you are obsessing over is only 30 points out of the 100. So even if you didn't do the vision, you could get a 70. But um, the written por portion is 40 points. So that's what we want to focus a lot of attention on. And then in addition to that, we have five points for proper grammar and mechanics. Uh, you're eventually going to take English composition. So if you have some issues that you need to work on, if you have problems with capitalization or spelling or punctuation or uh, sentence construction and all that kind of stuff, we don't really want to hurt you with your grade. So it's only five points. But we do want to call this stuff out so you can know to be working on it because eventually you're going to have English comp and it will matter. So uh, we're going to just sort of be helpfully pointing out if you have some issues to work on but we don't really want it to, to murder your grade if you're not doing that. But really, again, if we're using electronic software, uh, spell check and those kinds of things can help us do all that work while we're in process. And then 25% of the, uh, the grade, a lot of people forget this and it hurts them. You have to respond to other people. 
The reason your initial post is due by the end of the day Wednesday is that this is a week-long assignment. And the assignment includes posting and responding to other people. That's what a discussion is all about. So if you didn't have your initial post up by the end of the day Wednesday, people wouldn't have anything to respond to. If everybody waited until midnight on Sunday night to do their initial post, no one would have a chance to respond. So we've made this artificial deadline of Wednesday night that we want everyone to get their initial post in. And then after you do that, you want to come back and you want to read what other people have done. And you have a responsibility for responding to at least two other people. If you don't do that, you're going to lose 25% of your grade. And if you do respond to more people, you'll get all the full points. So, um, and, and really, that's the fun part. If you put yourself out there, if you say who you are and make a cool image, then the feedback you get from other students is probably going to be more valuable than the feedback you'll get from me. And it's a great way to network. It's a great way to figure out if, if there are a lot of game art people here and you start making uh, artwork and you find other people that have similar interests, you may find that this is uh, a connection to, to meeting people uh, as an online student. So we want this discussion board to be something that's interesting. And we want these responses to be substantial. More than just, hey, that, that's good, that's add a boy. Uh, we want you to um, sort of engage people, you know, say, how did you make that? Or did you consider doing such and such? We want you to ask questions that elevate the, the, uh, uh, the level of discussion. Uh, after all, this is school. So, you know, it, it's great to say hello and it's great to say, you know, that looks great, but we want you to take it a step further and, and really uh, provoke it. Maybe offer suggestions. Uh, elevate the conversation is what we say in these responses. So uh, anyway, to create this digital vision, there's a lot of online software that you can use. And a lot of people uh, want to use word clouds just because they it's like the first time they're seeing them and they think they're cool. Um, they're fairly simple to do, which is why I would encourage you to maybe go beyond that. But if you uh, if this is calling to you and you want to do this, then there's a couple of things I'll mention. Um, Tagzito is a, uh, a, a, an online site where you can go and it will create word clouds for you. Now, it doesn't create the words, so you have to start with that. I'm putting the link for Tagzito in here. It's just tagzito.com. Uh, you can see how it's spelled, T A G. X -E -D -O. But um, essentially, you bring a number of words uh, to the, to the web page, input them, and it will form those words into the shape of an image. And you can actually bring in your own image and have it form it. It has a number of different images that you can pick from, or you can bring your own template image in. Uh, and it's a great way to make a metaphoric uh, thing. I, I see an awful lot of game people uh, using the game controller image. Uh, to put their their words in and a tip on you know making a good word cloud you need at least a dozen words if you've got less than 10 words then the same words are going to keep appear appearing and it's a, a boring looking image and really you want to have 20 words or more in order to have a really interesting um, textural example of a word cloud because it's going to artificially make some words larger and smaller and you have control over the font and the color and uh, the sizing and positioning. So there are artistic choices that you're going to be making. But essentially, you input these words. You, you, you choose a template for the outline. And the, uh, the software will do the rest. Now, another thing about hosting this back on our image, they use a version of Java to create these things interactively. So if I were to click into one of these images, uh, I could roll over the words and they kind of grow larger in the same way that my doc does. And that JavaScript or that Java programming won't translate to our discussion board. So if you create one of these word clouds, we want you to export it as a flat image, a JPEG or a ping, and then put it into the discussion board. Uh, you can also link back to this site, but I'd prefer that you actually put the image into the discussion board itself like this rather than link out. Uh, it, it makes for a much richer discussion. It's a lot easier on all the students to go and be reading other people's stuff. So let's take Zito. Another thing people like is Bitstrips. Bitstrips is a software that allows you to sort of create a comic, a comic character out of yourself and uh, put yourself in different situations. 
Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of control. So you can make somebody that looks reasonably like yourself and then, uh, you know, put them into uh, superhero or real life situations. Now, um, we don't control the software. We're just pointing you to free software. Bitstrips, this is their website. Now, uh, the way they work, they have an online or they have a mobile app. So they will ask you to download the, the iPhone or the, the Android app, and you can do it on your phone. A lot of people find that very easy. If you want to do it on a desktop, then you're going to be running it through uh, uh, Facebook. And if you don't like Facebook, there's not a lot I can do. The, the, uh, the computer version, the, the desktop version, runs through Facebook. The mobile version, you can download from the App Store or the, or the uh, Google Play Store. And uh, once you've created your Bitstrip, you will just upload it. And again, you're going to be wanting to put it into the discussion board. But uh, a lot of people find this um, a great way to create an avatar for themselves and, and uh, have a lot of fun with it. Um, Pixlr is a sort of an online Photoshop service. Uh, it's fairly advanced, so you can do a lot of cool things with it. But um, because it's advanced, if you sort of need to know the software. Uh, it runs pretty much like Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, you should be able to get into Pixlr and use it for free fairly easily. Now, most people who are familiar with Photoshop have Photoshop. So, you know, I don't know if that matters much or not. I had someone ask me if they could use GIMP and, uh, you know, uh, that's perfectly fine. But again, the, the learning curve on GIMP, which is an open source version of uh, something like Photoshop, an image editor, uh, is even higher. So uh, these are the kinds of programs that you can't learn in a day. But if you already have familiarity with uh, high-end image editors, uh, this is a free one that you can use. So uh, I wanted to throw that out there. Uh, Poplet is an interesting uh, service. It allows you to make diagrams and infographics. So a lot of you guys who are programmers who are a little more right brain, uh, you know, you might want to make an infographic that tells about who you are rather than try to make some kind of uh, artistic or allegorical image. And for programmer types, you actually do tell us more about who you are by, by make, showing off relationships and things like that. So uh, Poplet is pretty cool. Uh, some people like it. If it doesn't ring your bell, I wouldn't even try it. You'll know immediately, but by looking to see what it does, that it creates infographics, whether it's something that you think you'd like or not. If you want to make a video, but you don't have video software or you're not a, a, a proficient video editor already, Animoto can do these things for you. Uh, they have a lot of templates. You go to the website and you have to bring uh, some text, some images to feed into it, but you choose templates and they will also provide you with music. Uh, one thing about making a video for the discussion is one of our rules is you can't use anybody else's work. So a lot of times people will make a cool video and then they'll, they'll want to put a Beyonce song underneath it. Well, you know, unless you're Beyonce's best buddy and she gave you permission, you're not allowed to use that because that's a copyrighted song. So we don't want to use other people's music in videos. And uh, one of the cool things about Animoto is that they have their own library full of music that you can choose from. So uh, you you would really have a, a be able to make a nice uh, fast moving video with some um, animation and and pre-made templates and everything with Animoto and the music that you could use is all perfectly fine to use. So um, you have to follow through their process and uh, you'll just feed in and, and use their animations and add your own pictures in where they're asking and so forth. Um, an alternative is called Plotagon. I don't think a lot of people have heard of this one. If you're a creative writer, this, this will be very cool for you because this creates 3D animated videos based on scripts that you write. So what you do is you're the script writer and you create characters, you define actions that they do, and you give them dialogue. And once you've input that into the website, uh, it creates these 3D animated scenes based on their own characters. So you can kind of see what they look like. But you can create dialogues between people or monologues and and you can give characters actions. You can put them in a variety of settings. You can have people talking in a restaurant or in a classroom or out on a park and whatnot. And uh, it's, three, it's um, computerized audio as well. So you're just typing in the audio and it creates these characters who interact with each other and make little videos. And the videos will be hosted on Animoto's site. This is free to use. 
uh, or you can also put them on YouTube and link them back in. And I will show you how to link things in on the discussion board. But um, Plotagon is uh, a very creative tool if you're a writer and you want to make a video, but you don't have a lot of video skills. So uh, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, another thing that um, writers you like a lot, I uh, had some people using this last week, week, uh, month that was pretty cool, is Storybird. Storybird is software that um, creates a kind of like children's book for you. It has an awful lot of artwork that you can use and templates that you can put in, but you have to write the story and you have to put the uh, action together, but it will create a kind of a little slideshow for you uh, to allow you to tell your story. So uh, people who are creative writers find this uh, very expressive as well. If you have a lot of pictures and you want to put them together, but you're not a Photoshop guru, uh, PicMonkey is a service that will create collages for you. And so you have a variety of templates here and you just pick the templates, drop the pictures in, and it will create the collages for you. And again, we don't want you to leave the collages here or on another site. We want you to export them and put them back into the discussion board. But this is a service that will make the collages for you. Now, if you're an audio person and you make audio and, and um, don't have any free audio making software, but uh, SoundCloud is a great place that hosts audio streams for people. And you can link some, you can put something on SoundCloud and link it straight back into our discussion board. So that's a great way to show off some of your audio. And SoundCloud is a lot like um, YouTube, only it's audio only. It's high-end audio. And what's very cool is that you can share the audio, but people can't really take download it or steal it or anything. But you can get comments from people. So you can get a lot of great feedback by hosting your audio on SoundCloud. And then uh, for video, there's YouTube. YouTube uh, is everyone gets a free YouTube account. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. It mostly has videos of uh, uh, lectures and stuff, but you can see some of my older work in there too. But... Um, Everybody uh, who signs up with Google gets uh, the ability to host on YouTube for free. And if you put your video on YouTube, you can link it back into the discussion board very easily. And uh, the way that this linking works, you can see that this is an embedded photograph here. If you go to the top of the 1.4 discussion board, now note that there's a difference between your post and comments. Comments is at the bottom. That's the way you talk to your teacher. If you put something in comments, it's a private message to me, and I'll see it, but no other students will. And so if, you, if you're on any assignment, there's a comments feature at the bottom. That's the way to talk to your teacher. But if you're in a discussion board, there's a post button or a post widget at the top that allows you to create a post that all the other students see. And you just click in here and start posting and start typing. But as you're typing, you got a little toolbar here. And this toolbar lets you, you know, make things bold and italic, you know, normal like that. But also, at the very end of the toolbar, there's this icon. It's a, a black folder with an up arrow in it. If I, fold, if I mouse over it, it says Media. So you want to click the Media button, and then you'll get a requester that allows you to bring pictures, audio, or video into the discussion board. Now, if you have the actual picture yourself on your computer or on your desktop or the audio file, and with audio, you can put in a WAV file, an AIF file, or an MP3 file. And with video, you have to have an MP4 file. If you're making a video, you can't put in AVI, you can't put in WMV, you can't even put in a QuickTime MOV. It has to be an official MPEG4.MP4 or .4V file. Uh, but you can then drag that straight onto here and the site will host it. And you can put, up, put in media up to 300 megabytes long. So if you make a movie and it's longer than 300 megabytes, you're going to have to compress it a little further. But we really only want you to put in something that's 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes. So that you shouldn't be hitting this 300 megabyte limit, uh, even if you're making video. And certainly not if you're making audio or a picture. Now, if you instead host that audio or video on SoundCloud or YouTube, then down here at the bottom, it says third party media. There's a spot for a URL. So what you would do is if I wanted to link this picture or this video in, I would load this video and I would grab the URL from the page that the YouTube site was on 
and then I can come back here and drop that URL in here. And it says down below that uh, our third-party media, we, we can take stuff from YouTube, Vimeo, Viddler, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Drive, Go to Training, Lynda.com, TED Talks, and other hosted files. So uh, this is how you put external media in, and the drag and drop is how you put files that you own on. And so for pictures, again, most of you are going to make pictures. Uh, I'd prefer that you create JPEG files or ping files. So if you're going to flatten your uh, Tagzito word cloud or something, turn it into a JPEG or a ping, and then just drag it on here, and it will load immediately. And that's how you uh, put stuff into the discussion board. So I wanted to show you just some stuff from previous students. This is a random sampling of stuff that I've saved. I, I get lots of stuff every month, and it's all great. So this is not the best or the worst or anything. It's just a sort of a, a representative sample of stuff that I have. So, um, and remember, most people are trying to illustrate the term that they coined. So a lot of times you're going to see text in here or you're going to see names and stuff. This person, uh, you know, uh, created the word digital out of a lot of different images. Um, please load. All right, this person, again, a gamer, created a relationship between, you know, things that are important to them. So we see a lot of icons in here. Now, while you can't use other people's artwork, I don't want you to go on the internet and just find a cool picture and say, this is how I feel. You're allowed to use the, the things in your world to represent yourself. So icons of software that you love or use is, is, is fair game. I, we see the Twitter icon a lot and so forth. Uh, and, uh, you know, front covers of games that matter to you are okay. But we don't want you to use them by themselves. You have to manipulate them. You have to put them into an image that puts it into your own context. So that's what a lot of people are doing here. And again, we're looking for metaphorical images. I like this one. There's a caveman with a laptop, and he's dreaming of, you know, maybe fire. Um, this is really loading slow. But we get lots of different illustrations here. This, this is a 3D animator, and she, she made her sort of uh, cartoon illustration. Uh, this guy was a gamer. He, the name he gave himself was the Digital Spider, and he's using all eight of his legs to work different menus on games. Um, so again, we see a lot of media and, and, and people talking about it. We see old world analog media and we see computers. So people are making awful lot of this immigrant native dichotomy, old world or analog digital. And, uh, that's what we're wanting to see you work out. This woman felt like she was a puzzle being put together. So she took a lot of pictures that she had and she put them into puzzle pieces. And she says she's evolving into a digital native. This, uh, this girl, Kiko, she used uh, bit strips, and she put herself into a lot of everyday situations. Here she is Instagramming her food. Here she is gaming seriously with, uh, with her box and her, her controller uh, and so forth. Uh, this guy took a kind of self-conscious selfie and then uh, tricked it up with a lot of really nice topography. So you can kind of imagine he's in graphic design. But again, he's talking about the things that are important to him. Mac, iPhone, Twitter. Uh, Star Wars, Instagram. Uh, this guy was a digital ninja, and we see sort of uh, matrix type typography, and uh, you know he's uh, he's got his Beats headphones and so forth. Uh, here's a digital octopus. This guy put his head on an octopus, and he's grabbing the things that are important to him. So again, he's illustrating what he said in his article, which is what we want to see. Uh, you can draw in a sketchbook. As soon as you digitize it and put it on the, uh, the computer, it becomes a digital image. So you can start off on a sketch pad if that's how you want to create images. Because, again, we're not looking for highly polished, finished artwork. We're looking for raw, creative ideas. So a lot of people do that with sketch pads. Uh, this guy took a selfie and then started manipulating it, and I think he couldn't stop. So he's, he's down in there behind all that uh, uh, marking somewhere. Uh, again, here we see a... Uh, uh, a, a word cloud. This guy um, decided his term for himself was digital Switzerland. Switzerland is famous for being neutral in wars and things like this. So he felt like he was like neither a native nor an immigrant. So he called himself digital Switzerland and he took a map of Switzerland. This was his own template. He didn't choose it from uh, Tuxedo or anything. So again, that's another way that you can uh, express yourself creating your own templates. Here's a gamer. He's wearing a, 
a Boba Fett helmet and we see the games that he likes and, uh, you know, these words are helping to define him. Uh, here's a cute sketch and we've got, you know, stick it, post-it notes and everything. So uh, you can see how this was made. This was actually sketched on paper and then shot with a phone. So uh, there are lots of ways to make a digital image. Uh, this guy's a kind of performance artist and, and these are things that he's, uh, actions that he's been involved in and he edited them together. And uh, the term in here is uh, the net, the net or something like that. Anyway, uh, the text of his term is in there. Uh, this guy was very much into photography, so he created a, a composition that showed his old world analog phone and his new modern digital phone, or cam his old camera and his new camera. Uh, this is the, the kind of metaphor that I, I like. Uh, we have writing on a computer screen and then a hand holding a pencil up to it. So again, you have the analog digital uh, native Im immigrant dichotomy being expressed as a metaphor. Um, more word clouds. Here's a fairly simple image, but it's expressing exactly what this guy felt. He felt kind of uh, trapped by all the media around him. So he just took a very quick selfie with him looking kind of exasperated. And then he took all the media and he used them as, as bookends to, to sort of squeeze himself in. Very simple. Uh, this guy's term for himself was generators. He was very proficient in Photoshop. We're seeing in about 30 or 40 layers here, and they are all very smartly blended into each other, so he's sort of showing off his skill as well. Uh, this person's term was digital divergent, uh, and uh, she's talking about, or, you know, thinking about the things that matter. I'm seeing Android and Amazon and uh, Pinterest and so forth. Um, this person, uh, it always looks like uh, Princess Leia to me, but I'm not 100% sure that's who it is. But I, what I like is that the, she's drawing so much power plugged into four different outlets. So again, um, using word cloud, but taking a little bit further, put it into um, uh, a collage with several images. And this is actually it's meant to be the cover of a phone. This person is very much into social media, very much into using uh, mobile technology. And so this is meant to be the front interface of a phone. Uh, here's a fairly simple image that was made with Google. Uh, Google has a paint tool in addition to a Word and a, uh, a PowerPoint type tool. And so uh, they made a scales. And on the left-hand side, we see the, uh, the digital natives type stuff. And on the right-hand side, we see the real world immigrant type stuff. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here I could keep going, but I think you kind of get the idea. I could just you know, keep boring you with that. But uh, uh, I've shown you how to link things in. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, about the size of a, a – this is a good write-up here, two full paragraphs, fully explaining yourself. Make sure that you're uh, addressing Pins Prinsky. Make sure that you give yourself a term and uh, try to get it in by Wednesday. Uh, this is not a hard deadline. This is a soft deadline, meaning if, if you miss midnight but you put it in later in the night or you put it in Thursday morning, it's okay. But try to get it in in time so that other people can respond to it. It's just good manners. And then don't forget after you put in your own post to come back and respond to other people. That's what this is all about, engaging each other. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if there are any questions, I think there were some that scrolled by. I'll, I'll look in the chat. And anybody that wants to raise uh, uh, their hand, I'll, I'll unmute the mic and you can ask the question. Um, so somebody asked if this would be recorded. I am recording this, and I'm going to post this recording as soon as I finish processing it. So uh, that's what I do. I, I put this stuff on YouTube and then I link it straight back. You'll actually find it here in the discussion board. It'll just be one of the posts. So uh, you, sh you should look for that in a couple of hours. It's all how long it takes to process. So um, uh, I don't see any questions. I'm going to open all the mics up. Hope there's not a lot of noise. Anybody have anything they want to say or any comments? Want, want me to dress again or anything? We got the jar. We got like 50 is that, is that the, that's the detergent, right? That's not, uh, All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. 
and uh, thanks. And I will be talking about the uh, the Digo assignment on Thursday. So I hope to see you there. And uh, if you can't make it live, again, the video will be up uh, as soon as I'm able to get it up uh, shortly thereafter. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.